let's get a brain. So here we are. It's the ultimate irony that the brain has to imagine how to imagine. You know, for 5,000 years, experts have been confounded by this brain. Aristotle in 300 BC imagined the brain was a cooling organ because you sweat on your forehead. 500 years later, the Roman physician Galen noticed that people with head injuries didn't think so well. So he figured out it must be the place you think. And then he dissected a bunch of men's brains and he noticed this gelatinous mass and the greatest Roman physician of all time decided that men's brains were made of sperm. <laughs> I don't know where that left women. <laughs> it was 1,300 years later before da Vinci uh, and you know, Vesalius and Etienne dissected the brain and actually found it has a structure. And so this is 1550, and these are among the very first views of the human brain. And of course, it's set in an artistic setting. The brain dissected, pieces of the brain described, and page after page, Etienne shows the brain sitting here in a beautiful chair. Okay, let's stabilize that. 500 years ago, we're beginning to understand the brain. Here's one drooped over a table, just so we can enjoy. <laughs> you don't see brain illustrations like this anymore. Okay. There's one hanging out by a tree. I think that's especially nice. Okay. So, by 1600, I'll leave this on here. But there we go, a little brain shot here. By 1600. It's clear that the brain is the seat of knowledge, and Shakespeare in Hamlet talks about the mind's eye. And in The Merchant of Venice, he talks about racking my brains about it. You know, science has marched on for 2,300 years, but imagination is still as much a mystery today as it was to the ancient Greeks. We've taken a grand tour in these last four days about imagining imagination. We started off showing how you needed freedom to imagine. You need permission from your society in the East versus the West and how difficult it was to imagine when you didn't have permission. We saw Gautier with the Flayed Angel where beauty in the service of science creates understanding by bringing us closer to the subject. We saw ugliness in war driving imagination and then cosmetic surgery bringing it right back to beauty. We saw imagination in the world of the very small with Hooke's Micrographia, where he imagined that there must be some basic unit of life, and he names it the cell. We saw imagining patterns that weren't real in your palm, on your forehead, or in the case of Lebrun, why we all look like animals, all right? We imagined, we saw how imagination struggled with two dimensions and turned them into three dimensions with paper overlays. And we saw the role of color in the albinus to, um, to show how imagination was critical in terms of color to activate our understanding. We saw the unseen forces in our imagination, whether they were angels or mysticism or even the reality of electricity. And then we saw hidden patterns in the data where we imagined that the truth was in the math, not in the thing itself. But with all of our technology, imagination has met its match. You see, trying to understand how the brain imagines, neuroscientists today don't have a clue, not one. Yet we need imagination more than ever. For 500 years, if we don't imagine it, we don't embrace it, and we don't grow. Imagination leads to discovery, not the other way around. We celebrate the technology, we celebrate the theory, we celebrate the discoverer, yes, but often we forget to celebrate the imagination that led to it all. We imagine what it must be like to ride a beam of light. We imagine how the double helix must unzip to, cut, to create life, or how random mutations and selection pressures, all right, cover a planet with 10 million species, a trillion, trillion tons of life from one single 
parent cell. You know, scientific, imag human imagination drives us. Scientific process just plays the supporting role. Okay? Imagination finds outlets in our quest for beauty. It finds it for moral certainty. It finds it for spiritual truth. But at the core, it's all about imagination. Einstein imagined that light had a speed limit, an absolute speed limit, and that time slowed down as you approach that limit. This is the man who invented the thought experiments, who discovered that energy and matter were actually the same thing, but then wrote the President of the United States to explain that there was an unimaginable weapon if you could release the energy in a teaspoon of matter. You know? But Einstein himself couldn't imagine that, you know, that the randomness that's at the heart of quantum mechanics, the most successful theory to ever explain the world and the universe we know, he couldn't imagine that God plays dice with the universe. And he refused to even begin to imagine, actually not refuse, he couldn't begin to imagine that dark energy and dark matter were 95% of the universe and we have no idea what it is. But Einstein knew beauty was essential. He said the following, I am enough of an artist to draw freely on my imagination Imagination is more important than knowledge. More important than knowledge. Knowledge, he said, is limited. Imagination circles the world. Thank you all.